Good afternoon once again and good morning wherever you are in the world and good evening. I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend, a great week starting. And um, I'm here again today. And I believe in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit that someone is going to be touched today, that the word that I have will not only bless you today, but it will also bless me. And I am confident in the Lord that um, the word that I release here is not mine, is of the Lord. And it is something that will so exceed in somebody's life. And so today, I'm just going to talk um, about a topic that I've heard before, a statement that I've seen people make before. And um, I have weighed the pros and cons of the statements in the light of the of the Holy Spirit. And I'm beginning to have a new understanding of it. And I want to share it with my brother today. I want to share it with my sister today. And I hope that we will all be blessed and um, there's something that will happen and come out of this. Again, it's Sister Gifty. And let us pray. I want you to open your heart unto the Spirit of God. Forget about me. Forget about the world around you, wherever you are right now, I want you to forget about the atmosphere and focus on the Holy Spirit to teach you the word. I do not have what it takes to teach you the word of God. It is only the job of the Holy Spirit to teach each and every one the word of God. So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you with a humble heart and I say, have mercy upon me, God, and have mercy upon my brother and upon my sister right now. Father, even as we, we are here, oh God, as I speak and as they listen to your word, I pray the word comes directly from you, undiluted in the name of Jesus. Father, I release the blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost to surround this atmosphere that I am in right now. And whatever atmosphere they are in right, right now, I take possession and I take control in the name of Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit dominate the atmosphere. Let the blood of Jesus secure the atmosphere. Father, I pray that, Lord, you will speak to our heart today, speak to our mind today, and transform a soul today. I say thank you to you, God, because you are the enabler. You are the God of truth, the God of light. Thank you for everything, and in Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. Um, as I said earlier, it is a word that I've heard people say before, and um, I kind of observe who and when and where they say it. <clears throat> it is a word that comes from the book, the Bible. And I'll read it to you. It's from Romans 8:28, the book of Romans in the New Testament, chapter 8, verse 28. And it says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. This is a word that um I will say. I've seen people abused before. It's 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 a it's a verse that I've seen people abuse before. You may wonder why I say I have seen people abuse it before. I have seen people that are not in the things of God, people that are just churchgoers, people that have no relationship with God, claim this Bible verse. I'm not saying the Bible verse will not be relevant to them. What I am saying is before you make a statement, you want to know where you stand with regards to that statement. Where is your emotion when you speak about this moment, that, 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 state, that statement from the word of God? Who are you with? What are you doing? And where do you stand in terms of who the statement belongs to? So that is something that I've been playing in my mind and the Holy Spirit have enlightened me about that I want to share today. That everything works for good for them that loves the Lord and those that are called according to his purpose. Those are two phrases that, um, that, 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 that specifically speak to a particular set of people. And um, as I said, it's been abused. Some people do not understand they make the statement out of knowledge, but they don't have, they don't have, no, no, no portion in it. It's not. It doesn't belong to them, because there is something that they need to do for them to have access to this statement. So it for it to be true in their lives. Hallelujah. For it to be true in their lives, there are certain things. Uh, there, there are prerequisites. 
In the world today, we know every stage of life have prerequisites. We do have stumbling blocks. We do have things that we have to do to get to some places that we have to get to. It is a must. It's just a rite of passage. Amen. So what am I saying today, people of God? I want us to observe who the statement belongs to. Everything works for good for them that love the Lord and to them that are called according to the purpose. When I was not into the things of God, I also believe in that statement. But adventure, sometimes it did work for me. Sometimes it just didn't. And I was wondering what the Bible says. Quoting the Bible is one thing. Knowing the Bible is another thing. Understanding the relationship with you and the Word of God is another thing. What am I saying here? The Bible of us as a whole, the Old Testament and the New Testament, is something that belongs to a particular set of people. I have had people say, oh, they're not Christians because the Bible belongs to the Israelites. That is an, a whole other discussion right out there. But I want to make it clear to you that the Bible belongs to everyone that believes in Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior who died to save the world. So by his resurrection, he's up in heaven preparing a place for those who walk with him until they get to heaven. Hallelujah. What am I saying? So I looked at the Bible and tried to understand, okay, if people are claiming, oh, this is, this is for this particular set of people, this is for this particular set of people, let me look the word Old Testament and New Testament. So for those of us that, that do not understand the word Testament, according to the Oxford Dictionary, I'll just read it verbatim. It says, a person's will, especially the parts relating to personal property, and in quote, father's will. And testament so the word testament means the will of God the word testament means the will of God and for most of us knows that a will belongs to people that belongs in that household or belongs in that family or otherwise if if the person choose to include other people it's a choice of his a will is something mostly first and foremost is that way a will is not read even if your name is not there you have to be part of the family or adopted into a family before you can sit in where a will is being read. So the word testament means the will. So what am I saying? Old Testament means the will of God before Christ. New Testament means the will of God after Christ. There is no particular importance in those two books. That Jesus Christ himself said he did not come to get away with the old books or with the laws. He just brought grace to help us deal with the laws. Hallelujah. Grace to help us walk in accordance to perfection through Christ Jesus. Because it's like we cannot do it with the law because we are only human. We have seen how the, 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 the Old Testament, people in the Old Testament, the Israelites, failed in the law so many times. So Jesus Christ came to give us a bridge between the law and God with a, a way of asking for forgiveness, a way for accessing God through Christ. So that is what the will of God means. Old Testament, old will, New Testament, new will. But all of it makes up, all of it makes up the word of God. Hallelujah. So if you are claiming that all things work for good for them that loves the Lord, are you a child of God is the question I have today. Do you believe that the word of God is yours? If, if, you, if, you, if you are convinced today that you are not a partaker of the word of God, there is still good news for you. And that good news is the fact that you only need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and begin to walk with him. And automatically you become part of the people that have the will of God for their, for their own personal use. It's their property that God gave to them. It is the premises on which we live as children of God. It is the, the, the will, it's the, what guides us in our daily life. The will is what gives us access to God and to the things that God gave unto us as children of God. What am I saying today? What I am saying is everything works for good for them that love the Lord. And according to his purpose, do you love the Lord? How do you show you love him? Are you walking with him? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And do you have a relationship with Christ? Do you have a relationship with God? 
Brethren, the word of God is there for you. The Old Testament, the New Testament belongs to the children of God. Those that have been called by God and accepted the call. Because there's one thing for God to call you to himself. There is another thing for you to accept him as your God. For you to accept his son as your Christ, as your savior. Knowing the word of God is not enough. Theologians know the word of God. But there are some of them that do not know, that do not have a relationship with God. The devil caught the word of God on Jesus during the day, his days fasting in the wilderness. So even Satan knows the word of God. But does that make a difference with him? Does that mean that he's going to go with the word of God? Is he a partaker of the word of God? That is a whole set of, of, of explanation right there. I do not want you to be somebody that carries the word in their mouth without knowing the weight behind it without knowing the power of it without having the relationship that would give you access to the word of god coming to life in your in your life because the word of god is life it is sharper than any two-edged sword but you cannot use it if you are not a child of god you can just say it but the enemy is not going to respect it that is what i'm saying here you can quote the Bible all you can, but if the enemy knows where you stand spiritually, if the enemy knows you do not know Jesus, if the enemy knows you're not a child of God, he's going to discredit that word of God. He's going to say, you are taking a word of God that doesn't belong to you. Who are you? Why are you quoting that word? Why are you standing on it? You cannot stand on the premises of something that you are not part of. Again, I say there is good news for you if you haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord. You can still accept him today and become part of those that are partakers of his will. The will of God is big enough for the whole world to partake in. He's rich enough because he owns the world. He created it. He created each and every one of us. And when he puts us on earth, he said, go and dominate the earth. How are you dominating the earth? Are you just dominating the earth on your own self-will? on your own physical abilities, or on your own educational abilities, or are you dominating the world through the word of God by accepting Jesus Christ and taking authority of the word of God through him, through Christ who strengthens us? There is still time for you, brethren. There is still time for me. There is still time for the whole world to understand the Lord and Savior that was served. I want you to understand that all things work for good, for they that love the Lord. And if you love the Lord, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Begin to walk with him. Accept him, bring him into your heart. Help him help you. Because the first thing you need to do to, is to give access to him. So his word will come to life in, in, in your heart and in your life. Accept him and then he, is, he will be yours and you will be his. And then there is a relationship there that the enemy cannot contend. The enemy cannot contest it because you have legal right to the will of God. For those that are lawyers, they understand when you say there is legal right. You, if you're just quoting the word without having the legal access, the legal right to Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it may not work for you. Not because you don't know the word, because you don't have relationship with the one that gave you the word. I am begging of you, brethren. In the name of Jesus, I beg of you. It is time that we begin to understand that there is hope for the hopeless. There is joy in the Lord. I have experienced it. There is healing in Christ Jesus. Let us give our heart to him. Let us accept him and make the will of God ours. Sometimes I see people struggling. Oh, I am waiting for the will of God to happen in my life. The will of God for your life is in the word of God. What does the word of God say about your situation? If you're a child of God, the word of God speaks to your situation. The word of God deals with your situation. The word of God is able to address whatever situation you're going through. But what we're doing today is contrary to what the word of God says. Some people are going to seek the world first and everything in the world. And then after all, everything else fails, they come back to God. That is the wrong order entirely. Because the order is seek the kingdom of God first and eat righteousness. 
and all other things shall be added unto you. Brethren, I love you, and I know Jesus Christ is coming very soon. I know some people are like, we've been hearing this forever. Hey, he said he will come without us knowing. He will come like a thief in the night. And thief does not tell you when he's coming. So the only thing you need to do is keep yourself prepared. That when the thief comes, you are there to answer to that call. Or when Jesus Christ arises in the sky, that you are in, 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 in alliance with him. You are in relationship with him, and therefore you'll be caught up in heaven with him. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that the word of God is alive for you and I. Only if we are children of God through Christ Jesus, who is the access to the word of God, who is the access to the kingdom of God. I am trying to redirect our attention to Christ again. Because we have lost our way, but it is normal. The Bible says many of us have gone astray. But there is still hope for each and every one of us to come back to him. Repent, accept him as our Lord and Savior. And everything else shall be added unto us. Everything else shall be added unto us. So I want, I want you to understand that Jesus Christ loves you. He does. You look through the whole Bible. You begin to understand things of God in different dimensions, in different ways. And um, he is there for you. He's waiting for you. You've never gone too late. You never asked, oh, I, I have gone too far. There is no way you may have gone too far astray that he can't reach you. All you need to do is to accept that you have gone astray and you need his direction to bring you back to the right path. As I normally will say, I love you. And Jesus loves you regardless of what you are in, who you are in. And the word that says that all things work for good for them that love the Lord is still there for you to take possession of. It's still there for you to take access to him. It is yours. Accept Jesus. And it will be yours forever. Thank you for listening to this video. And I am happy and I see people listening to it, continue to listen to it. And just don't keep this word to yourself. It's the word of God. It's not about me. Please forward it to others so they know. They know the word of God. They, they, they listen to the word of God from different dimension and different perspective as, according to how the spirit leads. And if you have never surrendered your life to Jesus, it is time to just lift your hands up to God and say, Jesus, I surrender unto you. I know I have seen I have gone astray, but I have come back unto you. And I ask you for forgiveness and mercy. Redirect my steps back to you, Lord. I am ready to follow you. If you need any personal prayers, accept Jesus first. Or, or somebody to lead you into a great church. Or somebody to direct you spiritually and you don't have one. You can contact us at 1-647-779-5662. That is a Canada number. Toronto, Canada number. Also, you can email us at Bethel House of Grace 2016 at gmail.com. Bethel, which is B E T H E L H O U S E O F G R A C E 2016 at gmail.com. And also, please subscribe to our channel, Bethel House of Grace, which is B H O B H O G. And you can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Remain blessed and have a wonderful week. Again, it's Sister Gifty. I love you with the love of God. I want you to partake of the blessings of God. But first of all, remember to have legal access to the acceptance of Jesus as the Lord and Savior. And everything else will be made perfect through Him. Be blessed. Remain blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen.